Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you, please invite your friends and today we are going to answer some Muslim comments. You know, Muslim comments to me is like, you know, candies. I like them. Actually, I support them. I encourage them. However, it doesn't mean I do all those things. I will not enjoy responding to them and show you how shallow those comments are. We have here a comment. I don't have too many uh, because I don't keep my videos as you know. But let us see what we have. <clears throat> we have a Muhammad and his name is Muhammad Zunad. Zunad. I think he is an Indonesian. And by the way, Indonesian people, I noticed that everybody is downloading the videos, but not Indonesian. I'm not sure what happened. I don't see many of you doing that. It says here in the comment, those people want to erase Islam. But for me, this is false religion called Christianity. I'm a human being. I will take it as a yes if you guys continue. What? Uh, what? I don't know. I mean, your English is not helping me at all. I thought my English is horrible, but look like both of us now we are in the same, uh, you know, school. My friend, they want to erase Islam. Islam is erased long time ago. Look what your prophet said. The prophet said, not me. The messenger of Allah as saying, Islam began as a small religion and will return to state in which it began. So if you are saying they want to erase Islam and you cannot do that, well, your prophet, he disagree. Look like you are insulting your prophet again and saying your prophet, he did lie and this is, will not happen. Actually, if we look at Islamic countries, starting from Indonesia, the biggest Islamic country, we will find there is no Islam in Indonesia. As an example, do you listen to music? Find me one Indonesian, don't listen to music. You will not find one, starting from you. Do you watch movies? Do you watch Tom Cruise? Do you? So when a person says such a statement, we laugh. Those who they are asking for reference, my friend, it's very easy. You can copy from this, you know, like look at the screen. Hmm? Look at the screen. Islam began as a small religion. Copy it. Copy. Or you can, for sure, you can type it and go to the website and put it in the search engine. I mean, why you guys need a reference? You, the reference in the front of you. Should I post for you always? I mean, I am one person doing all this work. So anytime you see something in the screen, just copy some unique words, put it in the search engine as it is, and you will find the reference. Very easy, no matter what video of mine you are watching. So as you see, you're a prophet, and this is Sahih, which is make it more horrible. It is Sahih. Oh boy. Sahih, oh man, Sahih, oh no, this can't be true, it is Sahih, so this is Sahih, shall I sing it for you? So what happened is that you Muslims, you claim to be Muslims, but the fact none of you is a Muslim. And people left Islam from the time of Muhammad, actually. All of us, we knew something is called the War of Apostate. Since the beginning of Islam, people left Islam. And there's a big sheikh, his name is Al-Qaradawi. Uh, he said, if not the War of Apostate and the sword, no Muslim left. Islam is demolished. And this is what you are trying to do now. You're trying to keep Muslims Muslims by forcing uh, terrorism. You know, anyone who leave Islam, you want to kill him. Anyone who make a comment, you want to kill him. A Muslim, he make a comment in Facebook, you want to go after him. 
because simply you are terrified. It's not because you are strong, but because you are weak. And because you know that Islam is gone, and now you are trying to stop it, and saying, okay, if we go after those who make comment against Islam, maybe we can stop Islam from collapsing. Islam collapsed long time ago. If we go right now and search for nightclub in Indonesia, how many we will find? And who is the customers? Hmm? Nightclubs. I met a person who work. I asked him, I didn't know him, you know, I met him in Asia. So I said to him, what do you do? He said, I am a manager of nightclub. I said, oh, okay. And uh, he said, uh, but I don't work here, which means the country we met in. I said, where do you work? I said, in uh, Indonesia. He said, Indonesia, there's nightclubs? He said, oh, they are so big. They are so huge. He said, some of them in the size of a stadium. In the size of what? A stadium. Actually, he said some of them, they are a stadium. So you go after a Christian for preaching the gospel, but your nightclub is open. Alcohol is everywhere. Girlfriend, boyfriend. Tourists coming. Oh God, if, if I go right now and search on YouTube, I will find tens of thousands of videos of foreigners, not only Indonesian, coming to Indonesia, boyfriend, girlfriend, where is Islam? The girl she is posting in her bikini. Where is Islam? There is no Islam in Indonesia. So you fool yourself, you lie to yourself, you claim that you are a Muslim, but the fact you live, you live from the bikini business. I'm sure I'm talking about those Muslims. By the way, bikini business is good. I mean, the sad thing, I cannot do it because I am not a Muslim and I don't live in Indonesia. So you accuse everybody, you attack everybody, and you claim that you are a decent person. You know what your prophet, he says about those who listen to music, brother? You will not believe it, brother. I will show you. And this is additional proof that your prophet is a fraud. Invite your friends, guys. At the end of the program, we are giving you free ticket, not to Indonesia, to Afghanistan. One way ticket. Anyway, you will not come back, you know it. So here you will see your prophet saying that those who enjoy the following, drinking wine, calling, calling it by other names, that's what the Muslims do these days, they do. They call it by a different name. As simple as that. And then they play musical instrument. Uh -huh. Musical instrument will be played for them and singing girls will sing for them. Is that the Korean bands? They keep coming to Indonesia, brother? And tens of thousands go crazy to meet them? What? Girls will do play an instrument for them? Allah will cause the earth to swallow them. Oh boy. And Allah will turn them into pigs and monkeys. Here we go. I, you know what? I will shave my 20 foot beard, long beard. If you don't have tons of videos and songs in your phone, you're yourself. And the question is, why Allah until now did not turn you into a pig or a monkey? Even though you are talking like one, to be honest with you, you are jumping all over the place. This is actually a clear proof that Muhammad is a false prophet, because if this is true, well, half of the country at least, I mean, if not, not all the country will turn into pigs and monkeys, because everybody listens to music. I listen to music too. I mean, like, my favorite song, like, uh, you know, Jungle bombs, jungle bombs, jungle all the way because I'm a Muslim, you know. Yeah, we bring bombs, we bring bombs, we bring everywhere. Hey, you know, like, you know, Alhamdulillah. You Muslims, if we search right now for, you know, according to Google, searching for, for porn, who is number one Islamic country? Pakistan. Number one country in the world, actually. 
So I don't know, you know, you tell me, you tell me, is your prophet is lying or not? So your prophet, he said Islam will start as a small and will end as a small. And your prophet, he says those who listen to music and watch girls playing music, Allah will make them pigs and monkeys. And look at you, you are so handsome. You don't like a pig. You don't look like a monkey. You know, you look like Zakir Naik, Alhamdulillah. So did your prophet lie? Maybe, I'm not sure. We go to the second comment. <clears throat> By the way, guys, don't forget to watch the video, previous video we just made a few minutes ago, because usually people, they watch uh, the last video and they forgot the one before it. Okay, look what this uh, uh, Muhammad Zunid is saying. It is easy. It is easy to deceive the Christians by these videos. Mm -hmm. How how it how is it easy? I mean, my friend, I'm showing you your prophet words. Are you saying if we show the Quran, we deceive people? It's easy to deceive Christians by these videos. CP is very clever. You mean that is something you should not say that. Isn't it the Quran says that those who attack Islam they are fool? What's wrong with you? I mean, you are really, you are playing with Allah. And I'm afraid he's going to turn you into a pig or a monkey. It's because now you have many reasons to be, uh, as you see the hadith, and he will say to me, you're lying. It doesn't say that. It's in front of you. So CP is very clever. Can some count me and tell me about the numbers of the video he made? Hmm. I know you better than anyone else. So you cannot receive me as ways you deceive these people. Oh, he's saying that he is the smart cookie. You cannot. I don't try. You cannot. You cannot deceive me. You cannot. You cannot. Mm -hmm. My friend, just to show you how ignorant you are. You don't know what you are talking about because you are exposing Allah again. Isn't it Allah? He is the one who said that he appointed shaitan to deceive you. Even he appointed shaitans to deceive your prophet. Hmm? Who is the one who sent shaitan to deceive people? Did shaitan come by himself? Or shaitan was sent by Allah? The Quran says, shaitan was sent by Allah. Shaitan, he mislead you, but he is doing the order of Allah. If you go to chapter 6, number 112, it says clearly that Allah He made to every messenger, to every prophet, enemies from the devils He appointed. He appointed to every messenger, shayateen, many satans. So Satan in Islam is a person who do a job. He is not a bad person. If you remember just a few days ago, we showed you that Islam believe that Allah implemented inside you wickedness. If we go to the reference, give me a second. All right. If somebody have a wickedness, actually every human being, he have wickedness according to Islam, and that wickedness is implemented by Allah, implanted by Allah. Read it carefully, it's not my words, because you will say it's, it's lying. And read carefully, this is Sahih. So don't tell me this is uh, not authentic, not etc. And read carefully, this is Quran. It says, وَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَىٰ He gave it, it is wickedness and it's pity. So according to Quran, it's not me who deceive you. 
if I ever did. But I don't do that. However, the Quran saying that Allah, He implemented deceiving and deception and wickedness inside you. So you will follow the wickedness of Allah. So look what you did. You are taking the wickedness of Allah and you are throwing it at me. When in fact the Quran says, it's not a Christian prince who did that. It is Allah who did this. And here you see, when the Muslims they try to defend their cult, they use their wickedness against us. Because what you said is a lie according to your religion. So do you believe in your religion or you believe in your lies? So how I can deceive you when the Quran says no one can deceive but Allah? Who is the best deceiver? The Quran says Allah. Nobody can deceive like Allah. And as you see here, the Quran claiming clearly, and this is a translation for the Quran and interpretation. It is something already been destined. It's destiny. What is the destiny in Islam? The destiny is your wickedness and your act, bad or good, ugly or evil. It is destiny by Allah. So when you do evil, you are doing the will of Allah. When you rape a woman in Islam, you are doing the will of Allah. As you see, it's implemented, your weakness, implanted. Who is the one who put the wickedness inside you? It's Allah. When the angel, he Allah, he sent him, he write your deed, the good and the bad. He write it for you. This is why when Adam and Musa, they debate according to your prophet, Adam, he says to Musa, are you going to blame me for an act which Allah destined for me 40 years before his, cre his creation to me? And then for sure, you know, Adam, he lost the debate. Then we see this guy saying, Continue with his wickedness and lies. Christianity is simple religion, nothing matter. If Jesus love you, everything to you is so simple. You know, well, Jesus said, my friend, not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord will enter the kingdom of my father, but the one who do his will. It is your prophet who said, if you say certain words like a hundred times, Allah forgive all your sin. <laughs> Have you ever heard of so such a religion? Huh? If you say Alhamdulillah, certain number, Allah forgive all your sin. Just to give you an example of how easy Islam is. Islam is a religion of sin. Christianity is very tough. Very tough. Why in Islam? It's so easy. Look at this. The Messenger of Allah. And this is Sahih, by the way. So you can you see how many times? Look. And even Al-Bukhari. So you cannot say this is not true. This is Al-Bukhari. Let us read Al-Bukhari. Allah Messenger said, Whoever says, Subhanallah, wa bihamdihi, 100 times a day, will be forgiven all his sin if they wear as much as the foam of the sea. <laughs> How easy is that? <laughs> I like it. <laughs> that's it so we just go and we say alhamdulillah bihamdihi 100 time and all our sin is forgiven even if it is like the sea and you are talking about easy religion okay guys from now on we are going to create a program it's called alhamdulillah bihamdihi to muslims and Muslim, they call us and they say 100 times Alhamdulillah. And then they leave the program and all their sin is gone and clean. So how easy, man. 
So why you wanna punish people for saying, go have sex, go do a killing, do go and do rape, and then the end of the day, so say subhanallah 100 times. And you are talking about easy religion. Subhanallah, that's it. Hmm. Any Muslim have a comment about Subhanallah? So, Muslims, do you think if a Christian prince he says Subhanallah behind he 100 times, all his sin will be gone? Like, did a Christian prince he speak against Muhammad for years? So now he say Alhamdulillah behind he Alhamdulillah behind he Alhamdulillah behind he. You know, after five minutes, all the sin of Christian prince, it says, it says in the front of you, Alhamdulillah behind Your prophet even did not say even a Muslim, he says, anyone who says that, even so, if you are a Buddha, or you are a Hindu, or you are a Christian, or you are a Jew, all what you need to say, Alhamdulillah bihamdihi. If we ask Zakir Naik about this, for sure Zakir Naik, he will give better explanation. Tadadun, 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 tadadun. Christian Prince, first of all, I'm not going to answer you. Second night, listen carefully. I swear by the by the shin of Allah, if you don't answer me, I'm going to let Abbas answer me. First of all, if you think you can make competition between me and Brother Abbas, you cannot do that because we are a brother and we are doing the same business. He delivered pizza and I delivered pizza too. Uh, you, you deliver pizza, you change your career? Exactly. Okay, listen, forget about Abbas now. Your prophet said, if you say Alhamdulillah bihamdi 100 times, Allah forgive all your sin, even if it's like a hundred times, um, like a million times, a billion times, like an ocean. So how you explain that? First of all, he worked there the scientific miracle. How the prophet he knew about the form of the sea? This is the question we need to stop with. And then after we finish the scientific study of the form of the sea, then we can answer you. What form of the sea have to do with scientific? You know, everybody can see it. The way it's come and you see form of the sea. What is it? Even this one is discovered. Exactly. Because the prophet was for a little bit far away from the sea. He is not far away. He's like a hundred miles away. What are you talking about? First of all, hundred miles at that time, it was very far different. Imagine in the time in the donkeys and the horses and the mule, you go on the right time. It's going to take you long, maybe two days. Well, uh, but still, you, you know, you will see the sea is not far away from you, right? Exactly. But the prophet, he mentioned something very incredible. It's incredible. Okay, you know what, Zach and Naik, I'm going to hang up on you and I will ask Abbas to call me because obviously you are not trying, you don't want to answer. Good temper. Don't hang up. If you hang up, you are hanging away from me. Okay, so what is the answer? Why if I say 100 times, Alhamdulillah, my sin is forgiven. I know. I, I want to know what I accomplish. I just say words. What is the accomplish of the work I did? By saying Alhamdulillah 100 times, my sin is forgiven. Good temper. First of all, by saying Alhamdulillah 100 times, you became like a parrot. Like what? The parrot. Oh, you mean those birds who speak like, take beer, take beer, exactly. And by the 100 then a dime, that means you became a Muslim parut. Okay. And what is the accomplishment from that? First of all, in Islam, you are a good Muslim if you are a parut, which means you repeat what you do not understand. And it is exactly what is required from you to be forgiven. Oh, okay. You know what, I'm looking at the chat and I see Abbas in the chat. He say nothing about Alhamdulillah one hundred time until now. Do you think Abbas, like you, is a parrot too? Exactly. All of us are parrot. And we are in different color. As an example, Abbas is a different kind of parrot because he lives in England. What a parrot called? Hmm. So when Abdul, he come and he post a comment saying a Christianity is so easy and he lies saying that in Christianity, if Jesus loves you, you can do whatever you want. That's a big fat lie. The Bible is so clear. Not everyone says to me, God, God. And the, by the way, the Muslim, they say to you, where Jesus says, I'm God, worship me. Not everyone says to me, God, God. 
will enter the kingdom of my father, but the one who do his will. What his will? We can go and read different places like Jesus speak about wishing a woman is not yours. Adultery, lying, all those things will take you to hell. Actually, Muhammad, he copied from Paul many verses about what is will make you go to hell. Like gambling as an example. But why you want to worry about gambling anymore? You go to gamble, and then after you, before you leave the casino, when you are in the elevator, you are going out, say Alhamdulillah 100 times, that's it. All the gambling you did and the prostitute, you step with them. And by the way, Islam is not against prostitution anyway. I can show you that from the Quran. If we go in the Quran as an example, you will see. It says, There is no punishment in Islam for prostitution. This is number one. And this, chapter 24, verse number 33, it says, force not your daughters to do prostitution. Not, sorry, not daughters, your, your slaves. And if you force them, Allah is all merciful. That's it. Where's the punishment for prostitution? Did Allah mention any punishment of those who they are using their slaves? They kidnap Christian women, they kidnap Jewish women, they kidnap Hindu women, and then they force them into slavery of sex. If there's a punishment for doing that? No. Zero. So prostitution is legally official in Islam. We continue with the comments. Then he said, He's answering a guy, his name is Ivan. Ivan, he said to him, you are a donkey. Don't say that, Ivan. Don't insult donkeys, please. Uh, he said, you call me donkey. Do, you, do I look like a donkey? That's a good question. That's a good question. Well, you're a prophet, he said, if you raise your head before the imam, he finished the prayer, Allah will turn your head into a head of a donkey. And as long as you agreed that your head is not a head of a donkey, that's mean your prophet did lie because there is no way all your life of praying and you did not leave or lift your head before the Imam he finished the prayer. So you yourself now you help us to prove that Muhammad is a fraud. Do I look like a donkey? By the way, we don't see your picture. But let me tell you something. No, you look like a donkey. Because if you believe in this hadith in the front of you, obviously you are a one. Who in the world want to believe that if a person, he is a believing in God, it doesn't matter what the name of this God. I mean, you came him shish, kebab, hummus, potatoes, whatever you want. But then if this God, you have condition, brother. If you lift your head, you are, you are, this guy he is praying for me. Okay, let us say I'm God. Huh? And my name is Muhammad. And this person is praying for me. And you know, he raises his head before the Imam finished because he doesn't know if the Imam is finished or not. How we know? Maybe his head is not, is, is, is not up yet. He stopped talking. But maybe his head is still down. How I know? I have to lift my head to see. So this God, if I lift my head up, he will make my head the head of a donkey. Based on this, my friend, I have to say, to believe in such a belief, you must be a big donkey. Another way, maybe you are a mule. Otherwise, you have to explain to me how in the world you believe in such a garbage. Then you continue saying, <clears throat> I will not call you donkey in return. Everyone who read my comment, eh? why you will not call him donkey? What's wrong with you? Didn't your Quran call them donkeys? <laughs> uh? <clears throat> Didn't your Quran 
call him donkey. And so if calling somebody donkey is an insult, why you are not against the Quran then? Let us see the Quran mention what kind of donkeys. Actually, the Quran is like a zoo, man. You know, if we go in the Quran, you will find that even the Quran mentioned the zebra and say we are the same as zebra. Yeah, we are very tall. Is that your Quran? And look what happened here. The one who is frightened is you. One cartoon will make you frightened. You go like a wild donkey. You start kicking everybody. One post in Facebook, you go frightened like a donkey and you start kicking everybody. Anything people say, anything people do, you go like a donkey. You forget that you are a human. A person, he saw a cartoon of Muhammad, you want to slaughter him and you did. So suddenly you are a person who will not call someone a donkey when you Quran he do so. Hmm? In different verses says Kal an'am they are the same as animals. So a person is speaking about this. Look at this comment, how stupid it is. Let them notice you are using slang words is a sign of hypocrisy did you say the one who used the word donkey to call somebody he is a person infected with the sign of hypocrisy did you just say that this is a slang words as a sign of hypocrisy so you are insulting your prophet saying your prophet is hypocrite is a coward. He called people donkeys. I'm really disappointed of you. You know, I was expecting Christian Prince to insult Muhammad, but you, my brother, my brother, you insult Muhammad, peace upon him. You do that. Shame on you. In chapter 7, verse 179, the Quran not only call us donkeys, he call us an'am, baha'im, cattle, animals, all kind of bad creatures. But they are animals. But your comment is very straightforward. Thank you very much. The one who do that, he is infected with the sign of hypocrisy. So you're a prophet, Aka Allah, according to your words, not my words. I don't want to get killed for this. And I don't, I, I never insult Muhammad. You know, I always respect him. I always I say, Muhammad, uh, bees upon him, you know, because a lot of bees is like honey. The second Muhammad, he show up, the bees like, whizz, you know, honey. But look what you did. You just made it clear that the one who used such a statement, he is using a slang word. Let them notice. Let them notice, my friend. Let them notice you. Using slang words is a sign of hypocrisy plus being cruel. Are you insulting Muhammad? Yes, you are. The Quran even called the parents of Muhammad Najis. What? Najis, what Najis mean? Filthy, dirty, disgusting. Nothing can clean you. وَإِنَّمَا الْمُشْرِكُونَ Najis. Have you ever heard of a prophet he described his parents in such a way? Chapter 9, verse number 28.
So to be honest with you, I like it when you say I go straight to the point and you did. You just confirmed that your prophet is a filthy man. Thank you very much. Another comment. Let us see. Shall we stop here, guys? I mean, this guy poor. I mean, I feel sorry for him. This guy, you know, he, he insulted Muhammad. He insulted the Quran. Uh, look, look, look what he's saying. Prophet will never call a donkey to a human. Did you just say that? Did you just say that? This man, he just condemned his prophet. Saying with the clear words, Muhammad is a very evil bad man. Muhammad will never call anyone donkey. Why? Because Muhammad, he have a very high level. There's no way he will see with such a language. Not Muhammad, my friend. If you think Muhammad ever will use such a language, no way. So you just agreed that if you're a prophet, he says such a language, he is a filthy creature. I mean, how much help I need from a Muslim more than this? You are condemning your own self, insulting yourself, lying wide open. Ivan, calling donkey is not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> and the funny is saying he is against hypocrisy and liar so you cannot call him donkey but your prophet can call him donkey and he did you cannot call them donkey and it's a sign of hypocrisy and your Quran says that too you cannot call him names and your Quran calling us all kinds of names we are filthy we are nudges we are animals we are cattle we are zebra we are I mean all of this but you the decent Muslim who refused to follow Muhammad and his faith. Thank you very much. Actually, I'm thinking to make you an admin because you proved to me you are better, way better than the faith in Muhammad. Shall we go more? You believe in Christianity because you have something to believe, supernatural. Mm -hmm. and it's not bad decision to look at another religion the power of a spirituality not bad decision just for a trail a test just compare it to Christianity to test the strength I like that is that the supernatural belief is your prophet believe that the donkey uh, he was made of 60 donkeys and Allah he sent him to Muhammad and Muhammad he asked him do you like females is it super belief that your prophet tried to commit suicide did your prophet was he trying to do like to 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 join different religion like it's called suicide religion he was trying it, maybe. What kind of a prophet he tried to commit suicide? And what was the reason he don't believe he's a prophet? So you are asking a person to look at other religion. Why we want to look at religion, any religion? Look at your prophet. Look how cute he is. Every day he go to the top of the mountain and he throw want to throw himself. And then the angel come to him and he say, you are indeed, indeed the messenger of Allah. Don't do it. Don't do it. And then whereupon this his uh, heart be uh, would become a quiet and would calm down and would return home your prophet himself he don't believe you know if you go right now and search for those who try to commit suicide suicide is a sign of depression clear i mean a high depression not only depression to the point you lost hope of everything 
to the point you don't believe in God. There is no way you believe in God and you do suicide. Actually, your prophet himself, he said that the one who tried to commit suicide to kill himself, like by, as an example, by a hadida, like a knife or something, he will go to hell. So you're a prophet, he knew that the one who commits suicide will go to hell. Let me try to find you the hadith. Uh. <laughs> anyway, let me see if I can find it. Give me a second. A prophet will do teach that if you commit suicide by the way commit suicide not cause suicide bomber suicide like killing yourself not killing the Christian and the Jews that's a different story in Islam if you you know kill yourself for the sake of killing the enemies that's very welcome <clears throat> Let us see the hadith. You know, I don't like to uh, mention something. Uh, let us see if we can find this one in English. Here we go. The one who commits suicide, he will go to hell. Do you see it? So your prophet was trying to commit suicide to go to hell? Was he trying to test hell? You want to see how hell looked like? If you're a prophet, he knew that the one who tried to commit suicide, he go to hell. Why are your prophet doing it? There's one answer. He's mentally ill. He's a stupid. He is not a true believer. He don't believe in himself himself. Actually, the Quran confirmed that Muhammad don't believe in himself. You will find in the Quran it says, In Kuntafi Shakin in America, if you have a doubt, if you don't believe, go and ask the Christians. Now let us see how many people will download these videos because I noticed not many are doing, you know, they are not helping. People don't care maybe no more. I'm not sure. Say, O Muhammad, O you mankind, O you mankind, it says that. Okay. Oh, this is a different verse. Just, I'm, I'm quoting the wrong verse. Sorry. This uh, The search engine is stupid. Yeah. Chapter 1094. So if you, Muhammad, are in doubt concerning that which we revealed into you, the Quran, you know, whatever, go, go, and they could hear the guys between the, between two brackets that says, i.e., that your name is written in the Torah and that in the Gospel, really, his name is written there. So Muhammad is having a doubt. Let us say, let us go for the sake of argument. Are you saying to me that Muhammad, he did not believe Allah? That his name is written in the Torah and the Gospel, <laughs> and Allah saying to him, "If you don't believe me, I'm telling you the truth. Go and ask the Christian and the Jews." I mean, that seems hilarious. Muhammad himself do not believe in the lies of Allah. Allah himself saying to Muhammad, "If you don't believe my lies, go and ask Christian prince." Muhammad, he come to Christian Prince, Christian Prince is spanked. Muhammad said to him, yes, it's written in your name, in, your, in the Bible, my friend, is speaking about false prophet. So yes, your name is in the Bible. Mm. 
Murad, he said the story of the uh, suicidal Muhammad was inv invented by the Persian. You see, this is even more stupid excuse from the execute from the story itself, because if the Persian they invented that, why the Arab approve it? The Persian, the Persian. Okay, well, this is Muslim Sunni. The one who is printing this, translating this, fighting for this is the Arab, the enemy of the Persian. So how the Persian, the enemy of the Arab, and the Arab agree upon Muhammad committing suicide. So it's a very lame answer, very silly, very shallow, you know, the Persian invented anything. It's, it is Sahih, this is Al-Bukhari. And you know, the funny, if you are a Shia, that will make you a Persian then, because the majority of the, 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 the Shia are Persian. I mean, they are, they are desperate trying to defend the stupidity, you know? Anything else? So I don't know if I want to continue with those comments, but this guy is really uh, very helpful, and he exposed his religion very much, and I like it. I like it very much. Any Muslim have anything you want to say? Anyone? Any Muslim would like to call me? So I can open my Skype just for you. Anyone? So as you see, the Muslims and their answers are funny and dummy. And actually the way the way they, they try to answer it help us. What do you think of any Christian said there is destiny in Christianity? Well, you know, in Christianity, there's, there's a certain kind of destiny, yes, but destiny not about sin and act. Destiny is like you are born to die. That's something you cannot change. You know what I mean? We can say that is a destiny. God, he decide your destiny that when you are born, you are born to die. That's why Jesus said, uh, let the dead bury the dead. The rest does not exist. They will say to you that God, he says, I choose you before you choose me. For God, he knew the future. He knew what you would do. But the Bible is so clear. Not everyone who do the say to me, God, God, will enter the kingdom of my father, but the one who do his will. So destiny, when it's come to act, is your free will. Destiny, when it's come to your dying, that's not a free will. You will die. Can you stop that? No. So yes, there is a destiny, but the destiny in Christianity is limited to the day, or let us say, you, you are not a person who will live forever. That is something have nothing to do with your choice. You cannot change it. However, the Lord, he says, whoever believe in me and I will live. You can say that he gave you a new destiny, but it's not really a destiny. It's a choice you make. You chose, in this case, you made your destiny. Whoever believe in me and I will live. So you want to live? God, he gave you a chance. So you can say, okay, God, he this deny two things. People who will go to hell, have to do you know they, they disobey me and people who believe in me and follow me they are going to live and go to heaven okay so we can say that is a kind of a destiny but who decide where to go it's you you know what i'm saying it is you who decide where you are going to end in islam is the opposite it is Allah He is tonight for you where you will go before you come, you know you do sin or not, who care? And we showed you that. Allah He implemented wickedness inside you. Right? This is why when you see uh, Adam and uh, uh, and the Musas, they are debating uh Musa, he says, Adam, he says to Musa, you know, are you going to blame me 
for a sin which Allah he designated for me 40 years before my creation? So even the sin of Adam, according to, to Islam, Adam did not commit sin. Adam is a good person. According to Islam, Allah is evil. Allah, he have a plan, and the plan is, I'm going to create a person, his name is Adam, I'm going to make him commit sin, I will kick him out from heaven, I will make a human being a sinner, so he can cry and ask for forgiveness. This is how stupid Islam is. Do you see it? Forty years before my creation, Allah made the destiny for me to commit sin. Are you blaming me for that? Do you blame me? Read carefully. Adam, he says to Moses, do you blame me for an action which Allah had written in my faith 40 years before my creation? So in Islam, you cannot speak about the free will. Even Adam himself, his sin was not his sin. The filthy Allah made him commit sin. So you cannot complain that Adam, he commits sin, for simply he is a victim of the filth of Allah. And here you need to ask yourself, how in the world anyone want to believe in such a garbage? So if Adam, he commits sin because Allah forced him to commit sin, so why he send him out of heaven? And why I'm going to be punished for sin which Allah implemented in me? Hmm? What kind of religion, what kind of justice this justice is that you are forced to commit sin and then this God, he will, for, he will punish you for he, what he forced you to do? Is that justice? He implemented weak wickedness inside you. He programmed wickedness inside you. He forced you to commit sin and he programmed you 40 years before he created you. As you see here. And then he is going to punish you. Like now, I will be punished for being a Christian. But he is the one who made me Christian. <laughs> he will punish you for being a Hindu, but he is the one who made, him, uh, made you Hindu. This is why I say Islam is a stupid, made by a stupid to the stupid one. The beach? Uh, Muhammad Saeed. Guys, look what Muhammad Saeed he said. Adam was not re removed because of his sin. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Just to show you why I enjoy Muslim comment. Muhammad, you want to bet that you, what Adam was removed because he commits sin? You want to bet? <laughs> I mean, you Muslims are hilarious. You see, it's unlucky. It's 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 your like your bad luck. You are talking to someone like me. Those answers can work for someone else. You idiot. You are talking to Christian Prince. Chapter 2, verse number 36. It was a penalty. So the shaitan, he mislead them. So we said to them, get down. Do you see it? So get down was a penalty. Get down and you will be enmity between you and them and the shaitan. Do you see the stupidity? This is your Quran, chapter 2, verse number 36. Shaitan, he mislead Adam and Eve. And the same story, chapter 2, verse number 38. And the same in chapter 7, verse number 24. Adam, he asked Allah, he says, Allah, forgive us 
Forgive us, forgive us for what? You are the one who made him commit sin. You are the one, the hadith is so clear. 40 years before you created me, you made me commit sin. So Adam asking Allah for forgiveness for what? How stupid that is. And then Allah, after Adam, he said to him, forgive me Allah, he says, get down. Get down, one of you, an enemy to other. Adam and Hawa and Eve. Shaitan, even, even the translator is explained to you. So Muhammad Saeed, your last name is Saeed, which means happy. It's unhappy day for you. Huh? Well, I am having the reference here. Guys, this, this, isn't this what the reference is saying? Adam, he's asking Allah for forgiveness. Did Allah forgive him? In this Quran here, they did not. In different chapter, by the way, he did. Stupid Quran. So he asked it to him, please, Allah, forgive me. Why? Okay, forgive me, why? Because he did not, he disobeyed Allah, he ate from the tree. So he mislead them with deception. Then they tested from the tree. Muhammad is trying to copy from the Old Testament. And then Adam, he asked Allah for forgiveness. And here, by the way, you will notice that Muhammad is a fraud. Anyone notice why? Adam here is saying, Forgive us, we did wrong, uh, uh, our Lord have we wrong, uh, uh, wronged ourselves. Huh? So Adam here, he confessed his sin, he, he wronged himself. How come Adam later, he noticed that he was a fool when he said that? Because here he says, no, he did not do wrong. It was Allah who made him do wrong. <laughs> Guys, do you notice? Do you know this? In the Quran, Adam, he said, forgive us Allah for doing wrong to ourselves. So the Quran saying, Adam, he, he admit that he commit sin. Here, Adam saying to Moses, you stupid, you cannot blame me. So look what we have in this religion. We have a stupid Muhammad. He is the one who brought the Quran and he is the one who brought this story. But those two stories don't match. One story, Adam, he says, Oh, forgive me, Allah, for committing sin against you, for I ate from the tree. But in the hadith of Muhammad, when Moses, he blamed him for the sin from eating from the tree, Moses, uh, Adam, he said to him, Are you stupid or what? Do you blame me for an action which Allah had or, you know, written in my fate? My friend, my friend, the video of David Wood about Iran. Go watch it, what I would do. I mean, what do I need to watch his videos? Do I need to learn from him about Islam? Come on, go watch it. I mean, what do I have to do with those things? There's people, they make videos about things Islamic country, they do. Okay, here we explain Islam, we teach Islam. You go watch it, I get it. I, you don't need to flood the, the chat. Well, what I have to do? I mean, we know what Iran do. Iran kill people every day. But this is all Islamic countries. Is that new? All Islamic country, if you make one statement against Islam, you are dead. Against the government, you are dead. What's new? Like you discover something? Anyway, so as you see here, it's one of the one of the clear signs of the stupidity of Muhammad that he is the same person who report the same story but in one story he says Adam he did not commit sin it was a fate written for him and in another story it says it was him confessing his sin to Allah so we can say here Adam maybe at that time he was in Iran the Iranian government, they took Adam to the jail. They start spanking him until he say, forgive me, Allah. It's me who did sin. But then Adam, he immigrated to America. And then he met with the Jewish Musas. The Jewish Musas in America, because now he have a freedom of speech. The Jewish Musas, he said to him, Khabibi Adam. Khabibi Adam. Khabibi. Huh? Look at this. Adam and Musas argue with each other. Musas said to Adam, Oh, Khabibi, Adam, you are our father, Khabibi, who disappointed us, Khabibi, and turns us, Khabibi, out of paradise, Khabibi. Then Adam said to him, Oh, Khabibi, Moses, 
a love over you, over his uh, people, Habibi, and he talked to you directly, Habibi, and he wrote the Torah for you by his own hands, Habibi. And now, Habibi, do you blame me, Habibi, for an action which Allah written for me in my faith 40 years, Habibi, before my creation, you eat it, Habibi? Therefore, we can call this Hadith Habibi, Hadith. But the question is, how in the world the same story is mentioned by the same guy? I mean, did Muhammad forget what he said in the Quran? Yes, he's a stupid idiot. He's not even the one who wrote the Quran. This is why the Quran does not match with Muhammad words, Habibi. With this Habibi, I have to say to you, thank you very much for being here, Habibi. You know, and uh, uh, the funny one, the Muslim, they bring a Jew like uh, this guy, what's his name? Uh, singer to prove to prove Christianity is wrong they call him <laughs> Habibi oh boy anyway in China they say he left as a donkey he never came back as a horse I'm not sure at that time they were knowing about Muhammad do you think this is a scientific miracle because this is a very ancient statement before the birth of Muhammad how the Chinese knew that this is fit perfectly about Muhammad he left as a donkey he never came back as a horse. Peace upon him. Allah pray for him, not to him. Thank you very much for being here. May the Lord bless you. Don't forget to watch the previous video, which is very important, please. Uh, I encourage you all to download it, share it, add subtitle. All my videos, as you know, I don't keep them in my channel. So I feel free to use them in a good way. Thank you. And God bless you. And until we see you soon again, Christ is our Lord. Islam is false. And we prove it every day. Take care.